So uh, now we have uh, Ronan. He's going to be talking. He's from Melbourne, and he uh, is going to be talking to us about uh, MySQL clusters with a Raspberry Pi. And it looks like he's got a box of them over there. So here we go. Thank you. Good morning. So my name is Ronan. I work for Oracle in the MySQL division. I'm a sales consultant. And yeah, I'm talking to you about a very useless setup of my skill cluster, and I explain why, but it's, it looks cool, so why not? So the one thing I have to show you, this is part of Oracle policy, I have to show you, everything I say cannot be used against me in the code of law, and I'm all lying, just have to do it. So Raspberry Pi, everyone knows what, what Raspberry Pi is. If you don't know what it is, then you should. It's a cool little machine. Um, and there are a lot of projects that they can do with Raspberry Pi, um, but cluster. So who from here knows what MySQL cluster is? Yeah, uh, few. Okay, for the rest of you, uh, I think you are up for a nice surprise. It's it's a it's a very cool, um, cool software that uh, basically is a flagship. Uh, it has its limitations, but um, as a whole, it's a great thing. So this is MySQL cluster, and the idea is a, a shared nothing uh, architecture. So um, the machines are basically nodes. They're supposed to be by design, be bare metal, their own storage, their own memory, and the only thing that connects them is the network, um, which is exactly what happens here. We have those four Raspberry Pi's, and underneath there is a switch. They're connected just by a network, and this is how it works in production as well. Um, it has, and, and well, I'll talk about the different nodes because we're going to talk about them in the demo, hoping that the demo will work, because the, the presentations always demos tend to break. Um, but it has few um, different machines or nodes, and each node acts as a different role inside a cluster. Um, the design ideas behind cluster, it basically, the, the history, it was designed by, well, I won't, I won't kick this because I'll oh, just put it here. Uh, the design was based, or it was designed by Ericsson about 10 years ago. Um, they needed a way to manage um, high volume, not high volume, high throughput uh, databases that sits underneath the cellular towers. Um, and and the, the problem there is that it's a very high throughput and it has to be high available uh, with five nines, uh, which means five minutes in a year of downtime uh, planned and unplanned maintenance. And that's because for telcos, time is money, and it's lots of money, and it sits in a very, very uh, strategic position. The last thing they needed, or the three things are high throughput, the second thing is, um, is a high availability, the last thing is low TCO. There are lots and lots of those sitting around the globe, and it needs to be you know, cheap. It cannot be some very expensive appliance and locked in with some vendor and then they stuff. And they decided to take MySQL and build a storage engine. At some point, MySQL bought the storage engine from Ericsson and you know, sell them, sold them um, licenses. And for a long time, no one touched it. It was for telcos, mainly for telcos. It was not for public use because it was just too complicated and had too many uh, edge cases where it will fail. And when we became Oracle, Oracle said, you know what, guys, this is, this is a nice product. You should basically, it's the nicest product. Um, you should spend more time and, and you know, develop this thing to be more um, user, more general uh, case used. Um, and we did. So now we can actually, uh, we, we have a lot of users around the globe that are not telcos, but they're using cluster. The last one actually really surprising is PayPal. Use cluster with um, about, how much data do you have? I think it's about, 100 gig of data, of data. Um, 100 gig or, can't remember, it's, it's a 100 gig, sounds small, but it is big for cluster, but it's for the fraud detection, I can't remember the, the size, but it's a fairly big cluster, and it's for uh, the real time fraud detection, uh, something that I didn't think possible. It's the top of the chain for us in terms of HA, so if you look at the, t the number of nines or how high availability each of our, or some of our features are, you know, it just goes up and up and up and MySQL cluster is up there as the top of the chain. Um, and MySQL cluster, as I said, built from three main um, 
functions. One is the management node. So just remember, node is a machine, a part of the management node. Okay, so it's supposed to be a machine by design, but the management node itself has a very important role, but it's a very lightweight process. So we, we most of the time stick it with another process, a, a specific process we're gonna talk about in a second, but the management node is responsible to distribute the configuration for the rest of the cluster. Um, that's basically what it does. And it acts as the arbitrator in case of hardware failure. Uh, if we'll have time, I'll explain the arbitration process, which is quite interesting and, and nice. Um, but that's all it does, and it's a very lightweight process. The second, the most important nodes are the data nodes. Those hold, those hold the data and does everything with the data. So it queries the data, it stores the data, it fetch data, it, you know, split the data into shards and do everything it needs to do. And those are those guys. So they are nodes and they store everything on their own uh, storage. There is no sun involved, nothing is a shared storage. You can if you want, but it does just defeat the purpose. Uh, so they do everything they need to do. And then we have the MySQL interfaces, which are basically APIs. It's an API just like any my, my regular MySQL. It just knows how to talk with the data nodes. So the application would never go directly to the data node. They will go to the interfaces and basically uh, run everything on the interfaces. The interfaces knows how to send this information to the data node. Data nodes does their thing, send it back, and, it, and we're all good. Again, everything runs on the network. Um, I think the next slide, no, one of the slides will show you lots of the ways of connecting to the um, cluster, I'll show you in a second. One thing that cluster does automatically without you, and, and just to understand, for the application, this whole thing is a big black box that is a database with lots of interfaces which have an IP. Now the interfaces can be ODBC, JDBC, um, Java, special Java API, Memcache, uh, DAPI, all sorts of APIs, but it's just a big box. And this is what's so unique about Cluster, is that for the application, it's always up. There is always a database in there, and you can go to any of those interfaces. If one fails, go to the next one. No problem if you are accessing to two of them at once, and one is changing a role, and the other tries to change the same role, you'll have locking as you expect from a database, even though it's all spread on different machines. Um, and, and one of the things that Cluster does automatically is basically take your data and shard it into the different nodes uh, automatically without you doing anything, and synchronously, synchronously re, re, um, replicate it to the other nodes. So they are going with pairs. Each two nodes are basically take part of the data and look at the data group, node group. We'll talk about this or it's actually not node group, it's data group. We'll have this in the demo. You'll see when, when it comes into action. And that means that any machine can go away if the other one is still alive. And once again, this is what makes it so unique. The idea of, of MySQL cluster is to always be up. We cannot say it's 100% because there is no 100% uptime, but it is, it can get to 100% if, you know, everything goes right, including anything you want to do, full patching of the you know, cluster itself, operating system, even hardware. You can replace your hardware without taking the database down um, because you can shut down any machine, do whatever you want, get it in, it will re rejoin the cluster, resynchronize, and then you kill the other one and then go and do what we, called, uh, what we call um, a rolling restart. Um, and lots of the stuff that can be done uh, online, like evolving a schema, changing schema, um, and some of the stuff can be done online without locking the database and taking it down. This is a graph, probably not complete, but almost complete of all the ways you can access a MySQL cluster. So any language that you can think of, or anyone can access uh, to cluster, the basic wells will be always like, regular ODBC, so if your language has no specific or connector or API to, uh, to cluster, you just use uh, ODBC or JDBC, and, and that goes through a MySQL interface and, and a layer, which slows things down. So the high speeds that we can get are not coming when you go to MySQL, it will be slower, still quicker than anything else you know, 
not on Rust API, uh, but on, on production machines. Um, and, uh, but it will be just regular MySQL, and you will see how we do it. It's just regular MySQL. There are different APIs, specific APIs for cluster that are making it much quicker. The cluster J is for Java, obviously, and it's a, it's a special API, very quick API. Java, bar, Java guys love it because it's all objects. All the database stuff is objects, and it's very quick. We have a Node.js, NJS API, goes directly into the data, once again, very quick. We have the Apache, which I'm not too fast about. Memcached API. It's not that you have to install Memcached. It's just the Memcached API because it's so well documented and everyone knows it. It's a NoSQL interface directly into the data. So your data sits and you can access from any of those. So you can have your relational database going through the MySQL, read the data, but on the same time access to a key value if that makes sense. And that will be much quicker. Um, so you can, and this actually is now available in MySQL, regular MySQL as well. You can have your data from two interfaces, a NoSQL interface and, and a regular uh, MySQL, the same data. You don't have to choose and say, oh no, this data is gonna sit in a specific database, it's just NoSQL. No, you just map two columns, one to be the key, one to be the value. Uh, and now with the, with the um, it's not in cluster yet, it's in regular MySQL, the new one, new version. We have a JSON type as well. So we're basically doing document and NoSQL and database as well now. And if you really wanna go crazy, then we have the native API, which is sub C++. It's a crazy API. No one uses it apart those who really wanna get to the maximum speeds of cluster. Um, storing a value here will take you two you know, pages of code just to store data. So it's really for those who go, wanna go crazy. So why would you run a um, cluster on, on Raspberry Pi? You wouldn't, okay? It's useless, it just has no, no meaning. And the, the fact is that Raspberry Pi is high performance, uh, cluster is high performance, Raspberry Pi is not. So you're losing one thing. And the other thing is that cluster, in order to achieve the high performance is in memory database. It is flushing to disk, so there is persistence, but by default, the tables and the indexes are saved from memory, which means you need, you need a lot of memory to accommodate for your databases, or for your database. Raspberry Pi, eh, not so much. But if you really want to, the reason to do it is, well, one is to basically show that, you know, MySQL still, even though it's a cluster and it's a quite sophisticated uh, software, it can run on Raspberry Pi, no problem at all, and you'll see, it's actually performing. It's not gonna blow your mind away, but it's performing. Um, it can be for you know, development, but let's face it, I'm doing most of this stuff mostly on, on virtual machines on my laptop, and they actually work faster than the Raspberry Pi. Um, so yeah, it's, if you're coming to OSD and you wanna show people something cool, something cool, then you'll do it. Now, this is, this is our demo. This is what's gonna happen in demo. I'm, I'm explaining what I'm doing and then I'll do it so you'll know what I'm doing while I'm just running commands. This is gonna be our cluster. We have a Linux virtual machine running on my, on my laptop. This is gonna be our web application. It can be as many as we want. I'm just running one because it doesn't make any sense to use more. And it runs WordPress. And my WordPress is a hacked version, hacked. <laughs> it's, a, it's a version of WordPress that I hacked the, temp, the template in such a way that when I'm looking at the homepage, it's actually creating more pages and comments, just random stuff. Um, so uh, we have some writes as well as reads, otherwise WordPress is quite boring because it just reads. Then we have the four Raspberry APIs named, as you would think, CLA 0, 0, 02, uh, 01, 02, 03, 04, uh, with the corresponding IPs. This one is gonna be our management. So this is why I said that there is a management node that's supposed to be different, but doesn't make sense because it's a very small process. So that's gonna be management. It's gonna be our MySQL interface for WordPress. And it's gonna be an API. The API is used to run, it's the C API. And some of the applications, one of them they're gonna use, needs the API, it's like a socket. And you should have as many as you need to accommodate for, um, if you're using cluster J, you will need APIs, those. It's just sockets waiting for connection. And they are the ones that go into the data, data, um, to the data nodes. 
The second one is going to be very boring. It's going to be my MySQL interface. And those are going to be our data nodes to start with. They're all connected with the network. Um, one, another thing about the, the, uh, the WordPress, it is, it has a plugin. I didn't do it, it's not mine, I won't take the credit. Someone created a plugin that replaced the connection layer for WordPress and allows it to use master-slave topology. So all you have to tell to this, you configure this plugin and tell it as a PHP plugin, and you just tell it, those are my IPs, and you can write or you can read from here and write to here, and it's supposed to be master-slave. The guy was smart enough to actually allow you to do active-active, read and write from everyone. And it's actually smart enough to not fail if it cannot reach one of the interfaces. So you just try the other one. And I think it's just doing some round whooping, nothing or even random select. I don't know how it works, but it works. It just split the, 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 uh, the reads and the writes into two, two different interfaces, which works well for us because it will split between those two. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run this set up the uh, WordPress database, blah, 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 do those things, set up the cluster. The cluster is not set up. Those machines are empty. Well, they're not empty. They have everything installed them. The only thing is that the data directories for cluster and for MySQL are sitting on Rendisk. So when you reboot or start those machines, it's empty. There is nothing, which will work well for part of the demo. When I'm restarting, it's basically emulating you have one of the machines bust in fire, it's gone, it's dead, you take it out from the wreck, throw it into the bin, take a new one out of the box and it's totally empty. And I'll show you how cluster survive and, uh, and do what it's supposed to do. So what will happen in this, we'll kill this machine and by killing it, I'll just reboot it. Well, the first thing I'm not rebooting, I'm just killing the process. I'll reboot it because the other one is less uh, impressive. So I'll, I'll actually reboot it so it's empty and then we'll get it back, we'll start the process of a cluster on it, and it will synchronize, hopefully. And then when it's done synchronizing, I'll actually, will kill the other one and do the same thing and show you how, when it comes back, it synchronizes again. So you believe me that, you know, they actually took over for each other. So that's, that's one demo. And the second demo will be actually adding more nodes and everything supposed to be online. Now, this is gonna be tricky. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Most of the time it is. And the reason is because Raspberry API is, is finding it a bit hard to just run all those things together, synchronizing, and, 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 the, and, and this is hammering. I'm running an, a, an Apache benchmark on this, and it's hammering the database. So you'll see, it's, it's just. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another four data nodes, and two of them will sit here, and two will sit here. And then we're gonna basically split the data into those machines. Now there is a process that you're supposed to reclaim your, uh, your lost, um, lost space or storage from those ones. We cannot run it on Raspberry Pi, it's just not quick enough. It tries to do it and then it, it's starting to do some snapshot that is internal to cluster and this stops and so, so it just cannot because it's not quick enough. The, the, the subsystem, the IO subsystem is not quick enough to do it, even though it runs on memory. So we won't do the optimize, but I will show you that when I'm, and I'm, I'm running a bit of a different um, benchmark, I'll just throw a lot of data into the cluster and you'll see that the, the data is now spread across all the, all the machines automatically. We don't have to do anything. So, now I'm not, gonna type stuff, I'm copying and pasting, because that's, that way it actually looks good. So, what we're gonna have here, okay, so what we're gonna have here is, and I'll, I'll make the windows a bit bigger for you to see. Some of them you don't really need to see what is written in there. Some of them are just to show you activity. Some uh, I'll just make a bit bigger. So this is gonna be our cluster log. Those two are gonna be our, a log for the, for the MySQL itself, so that will show us activity. And as long as you see this running, doesn't matter what it says, but if it's running, it means that now the application, which is what you care about, uh, accept information or get information from the database or store information in the database. So the database, for the purpose of the application, if this runs, it means the application is up and running, which is again what you care about. Um, in here we will have a status current 
of ongoing status of the cluster. And in here, we're going to run all sorts of, uh, of stuff. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm starting the log in there. So, and there is nothing in there yet, so uh, we won't see anything. And what I'm doing first is I'm starting the management node. Because here's the first, this is the first process that has to run. Now, you can run more than one. Redundancy, cluster is all about redundancy. You can run, and you should run more than one. In our demo, I'm just running one. But if you have two, if one goes down, the, all the nodes will look for the second one. And they're supposed to have shared the same information. I'm starting one. And it's just starting a very small process. And you'll see in the log, it's starting. It's saying, yes, I'm here. Uh, this is the configuration. I'm ready. I'm, I'm happy. Now in here, this is the ongoing status of the cluster. So I'll try to make it a bit bigger. OK, for now it's good. We have, those are the two data nodes. And currently you see that these, the IDs and everything are coming from the configuration. So where did you go? Yeah. So currently you see that they are not connected and accepting connection from CL03 and 04, exactly what we want. It's not there, it's just waiting. This is the management node. It's running and it's running from this IP and it's up and running. And our three interfaces, two MySQL and one is an API. And they're still not running and waiting for connection. So let's run the actual cluster. So our cluster are gonna run in here. I'm running the, the management node. And here you can see that it's starting phases of restarting. You see that those are now starting. It's doing all sorts of things. There is a top here running to show you later that they're actually busy, they're actually doing something. We're waiting, it's starting up, it's creating all the, uh, this is initial start, so it's creating all the data structure it needs. Everything is good, and we're happy, and they're running, and you can see that now they assigned a node group. And you can see that both of them has node group zero. So they are taking a responsibility for each other. There is one that is marked with an asterisk. It used to say master, but that confused lots of people because they thought it's like master slave. It's not, it's an internal um, transaction coordinator you cannot really change it. You don't need to change it. You don't, know, you don't need anything about it. it just, it's that, just there. So we have, so we have those, those two running, these two running, and the last thing we need is to start our MySQL interfaces. So we're actually going to create, as I said, MySQL, the MySQL itself is, nothing is created, even not the base database. So I'm creating the base database for cluster for, for MySQL on those devices because it's empty. And I'm actually running, I'm running the daemon for MySQL. And you can see that it's starting to run in here. Yep, this one, the other one. And it says, yeah, connecting, it does, does all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, start, yeah, cool. And we have those two up and running. Right now our cluster is ready, ready to do whatever we want. So it was quite quick. Nothing to it. I am creating um, users, um, you know, just few users inside my skill, nothing too special, uh, so we can access. And, and now those are doing tile on the general log. So when things happen, we'll see activity in here. Next thing, I'm, I'm importing um, MySQL's uh, WordPress schema into MySQL. It creates the WordPress database. By the way, the interesting thing is, I'm doing it on CL0, okay? And, okay, so I'll show you in a second. So I'm, I'm doing it on, on CL0, right? It, on one interface. I'm just accessing MySQL and I'm importing some stuff. And you could see that here it was import everything. And now I'm going to CL2. And I'll make this bigger. And if we go to MySQL, yeah, MySQL here and we do show databases. You actually have the WordPress, the WordPress database here. And if we do, we have all the tables here. So this is cluster. You, everything is there, you, you, it's, it's in there. And I can add as many as I want like with those, they all will see the same data. And we'll all have locking and everything is synchronized so it's quite cool. And, now, I'm going to go to my Linux machine. 
and I'm going to start hammering. And this is me accessing to WordPress. Go. 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 Come on. And? Come on, this is embarrassing. This is really embarrassing. What's going on? Oh, here you go. Go. See, this is what happens in demos. You always do it and it works fine. Why now it's not responding? That's a mystery. So we see activity on one interface. This interface is supposed to be active as well, if it will. Yeah, feel free to actually do something. You're definitely alive. This is weird. Okay, the, as demos goes, we always face those. No, it's not good. Oh, of course, actually there is an activity. I just didn't have the, sorry. It has an activity, we just didn't see it. So we now see that the activity is uh, 10 minutes. Okay, ooh, do it quickly. Uh, the last one stole my time, so. <laughs> okay, so we have activity. I'll, I'll, do, I'll try to do things quickly. So we have the activity. I'm gonna reboot one of the machines. Uh, basically, I'm gonna reboot CL O3, and we'll see what happens. So we go to O3, and you basically, and you can see here that it's actually the NDB process. Well, you can see it because it's here, but it's um, it's actually busy. It's uh, doing what it's doing, and I'm rebooting. Okay, and you you'll see here, things are starting to say, oh, okay, I lost it. Look at the application. The application is up and running. Don't care about anything. This is now saying, oh, wait, we lost it. This is saying, oh, well, it did some process about, you know, checking if the community is still healthy, if there's no possibility of split brain, all sorts of stuff. And it says, yeah, that will, it's gone. I'm going to take over for it. Cool. And now let's start. Let's go again into, let's open O3 and hoping it will come back Come back to us. Waiting for the Raspberry Pi to start up. And as I said, it's empty. It's a new machine, it has nothing. Everything we did before is gone for this, for this machine. It knows nothing about being part of the cluster. It has nothing out from the old data if it will come back to life. Come on. Yay. So it's back here. And the only thing I'm doing is I'm starting the NDB process in here. And you'll, you'll find it hard to see, but this now recognize, oh, you're back, cool. And he asks, oh, this is who I am and I'm lost data, please can you send me data? And now it's doing phases of restart. So it's asked from node one, can you please, oh sorry, from node two, can you please send me the information, the data? Now it has to send it its own data and the replica so it can take over the whole thing. And it does what it does, it takes a bit of time, it all runs from the network and you can see it's saying starting in here, going through a process, and look at the application. This, this is just, you know, the, the fact you see sometimes this and this is just because of the plugin itself, but this is active all the time. There's nothing, no problem in here. So your application knows nothing about the fact that the node just died and you replaced it. And what do you know, started and this said, yeah, I took over, I'm back in life and I'm good. Okay, I won't kill the other one because of time, uh, and you believe me that it will happen the same for the other one. What we can do now is to actually do the adding of, the, of more nodes, and this is important. You can scale your cluster online. You don't have to you know, schedule a maintenance and stop everything. No, you just do it online. 
So what I'm going to show you now is I'm looking at, I'm looking at the description of, of, um, of um, the WordPress database. And what I see here is basically, doesn't matter what it says, it just says that the WordPress data table is split into two different data nodes. And this is the amount of rows in each table. I don't know if you can see it, but it's about 324, and this one is 314. Almost equal um, um, distribution between the two nodes, okay? We're expecting it to be different. What I'm not gonna do now, I'm gonna kill the management node. Node. Now, management node can die. Oh, I won't see it in here because this one is the management node itself. But it can die and nothing happens to the cluster because it's only when you restart the cluster. And now I'm going to start the management node with a different, uh, with a different um, configuration file. And you'll see in here that now the configuration file includes that, that, it's, that it's stable. We have those two nodes and four more new nodes. By the way, underneath, you won't be able to see it, but underneath there is the, 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 the amount of space it takes in each data node. But those are now waiting, so we have to add them. But before we add them, we have to do a process that will take a bit of time, and that's doing a rolling restart. Advice to all the other nodes that there is a new boys on the, on the neighborhood. And for this, we have to shut down each one of them. So we are, we are shutting down the first one, and restart it, so it will reread the, the, the information. But while we're restarting, the application don't care. Application goes um, keep on going. Now the process takes a bit of time, and you have to sit and basically restart every one. There is a product in the on the this is the GPL version you can use for free. The enterprise version has an additional manager that does that all for you. So all you have to say is add those nodes. It goes. It advertises everything. You're doing the rolling restart. So you. Instead of you sitting here and typing everything, you go and have a coffee while it is doing what it's supposed to do. So wait for it to come back. Now it's coming back, and it's now synchronizing with the differences that happen while we were still, you know, I was down, I restart myself, I was gone for a minute, and there was new data, I need it. So please send me the differences, and it's waiting for the differences, and it's up and running. Now we'll do the same thing for the next node. Yeah, this, this takes time. There is nothing you can do about it. Uh, again, Raspberry APIs, network, everything is... Um, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. We have to do the same thing to the MySQL interfaces so they'll know that there are more nodes. Starting, getting there, building indexes, building other indexes, building all sorts of stuff basically uploading the information into the memory because everything is saved on memory. There is an option to offload tables on disk and save on RAM. Uh, it will obviously, um, you'll suffer by performance, but um, it, it saves memory. And it's, yeah, done, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna kill and restart the MySQL interfaces. So now you'll see that this is stopping because, well, it's down. I'm waiting for it to, to be gone, and now it's doing what it's doing. It's coming back. It has no activity yet. It takes a few seconds on, on Raspberry Pi to go back into activity, and I'm waiting here to see that this has said, okay, I, I'm, I'm connected and I'm going, and you'll see that as soon as this engage, the, the activity here will um, and this is what's so nice about this plugin. It doesn't care. I just lost one interface. No, no, I'll just go here. Yes, come on, come on. Yay, here you go. So it's back, and in here we're supposed to see the activity coming. I'll do this for the next one as well in the meantime. Okay, so here's the activity. Very soon, five minutes. Oh, five minutes is heaps of time. Ah, now it's, as long as, long as I restart the cluster, I don't care, because the, ne the next things are really quickly. I'm just waiting for this to come back. Oh, 
Okay, I think it's back in business. Yeah, come on. Come on. I know you want it. Come on. Yeah, it's not good. Come on. There you go. Okay, so we are back in business, and what we can do now is we can start uh, a, a more data nodes. So we have data node running in here, another one. We have another one running, running in here. We have another one running in here, and we have another one running in here. They're all coming. Actually, starting them all at once might not be a good idea to write crash now, as opposed to because now that there's a lot of stress on the Raspberry Pi, it might crash. Let's hope it won't. But as you can see, they're starting, they're figuring, the, figuring out who they are, what they're doing. They're doing some, some type of synchronization with the rest, and then they say, okay, we are up, but we have no assignment for, for a node group. So please match us with another node that we work together because they all come in pairs. They have to come in pairs. This is part of the settings, and I'm just waiting for everyone to come up. This one is up. Let's wait for this one to come up. And as you can see, activity, still going. Come on. Yay. Okay, so we're back, and, and I'll just show you. I'll take this out so I can actually show you. Okay, so this is the full... Okay, so this is the full, the full um, report. And we can see that we have those nodes and this is how much data is occupied on each node. And you can see that those are 50% occupied from the RAM that I allocate to, those, to the cluster. And those are now zero. Cool. Um, can I get rid of it now? Can I go? Go back to, go back to where you came from. I'll just put you in here. Ah, stay here. Okay, so I'll go to the management node uh, facility and I'll tell the management node, please create a node group from three and four. So three and four just got node group. I'll show you in a second that they actually got it. And five and six. And now we can see that those are node group one, those are node group two. And now I can actually show you, oh, and I'll go to WordPress and, I sh and what we have to do now is actually tell the database itself. So MySQL, we go and we use the WordPress database. And all we have to do in order to re, um, resp or re um, distribute this, this table over all the data nodes is just do another table uh, organize. And you can see that now Data is starting to split across, and the activity, by the way, here there might be a bit of not activity because the Raspberry Pi is very busy now, the network is very busy, uh, but the activity is up and running. Your application is not stopped even when you're distributing everything across all the machines. So while you're doing this, this um, distribution of the data, Nothing happens, not, not, not a problem. Actually, I'll stop the hammering because it makes it slower and I need the time to show you one last, last thing. So let's wait for this to finish up. You can see here that it's actually moving stuff, building indexes, doing all sorts of stuff. Please finish, please finish. Now, this is a good time. Yay, it's done. And you can see the activity resume as soon as we stopped it because for Raspberry Pi, it's just too much. The last thing, and seriously the last thing, oh, one more last thing, just showing you that, oh, that if you look now at the WordPress uh, posts, it's now split into, you can barely see it, but this is the split that we saw before, only two splits, now it's split into six. And the really last thing is that I'm gonna hammer strongly from those two machines. What, what are you? Come on. I'm hammering really strongly from the two interfaces 
uh, just to show you that that now I'm hammering those interfaces with MySQL slap, and you can see that now new data is automatically spread across all the net, all the nodes. We don't have to do anything. We didn't have to say how we split the data. We can, we can tell the cluster please split based on this key, but if you don't, it will go by primary key and automatically for you. That's it. Right on time. Thanks for that uh, great demo on MySQL there uh, and the blinky light units of the pies over there. They were going very strong there. So <laughs> we'd uh, like to present you with this uh, Thank you very uh, much. storage device. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for giving that talk there. Um, so we're just going to uh, quickly set up for the...